So I just got finished with the Ender 3 live stream build and it went pretty well. Uh, it actually went a little smoother than I expected. Like we definitely hit some snags, but that was to be expected with, you know, any of the cheaper type printers. And um, I thought while I'm exporting that edited version of the video, I would go ahead and record this intro. The, actually, the biggest issue I ran into so far, I didn't address in the live stream. And I'll put this in here because it's important. And that's that some of these have, because of a QC and a manufacturing method, a wonky safety ground on the power supply that doesn't affect operation. But if the chassis of the power supply ever became electrified and you touched it, you could get electrocuted. Now, this is not a Creality specific issue. This is from the vendor they buy these power supplies from, so this could affect other printers or if you happen to buy one of these power supplies third party. So always check your grounds. After I posted the video, I was actually delighted to see that this is somewhat of a known issue because a couple people came forward in the comments and said that they had similar problems, but in a slightly different mode. Like TH3D came forward and said that he had experience with the bolt that mounts the PCB to the standoff and therefore grounds it to the chassis was loose, so he managed to tighten that down and it solved the problem. Uh, the Breadboards channel, he mentioned that the problem he had was the plastic shield underneath the case between the case and the PCB was actually pinched on that standoff. And so the PCB wasn't making good contact. A viewer named Plasma said that he had found there were some problems with the actual physical wiring harness going from the output jack for the AC to the power supply itself that was coming loose. So it could be any number of things. That last one would be a Creality issue. The others are a power supply issue. And again, this can happen with any power supply. So always check your grounds. Now, because some people asked, I will put affiliate links down in the uh, video description to these, the Creality official store on Amazon in uh, whatever zones that I have access to. I'm not going to put links to the overseas stores because if there are these problems, I don't feel comfortable sending people to places that don't have some kind of return and buyer protection built in. And if you're buying this as a modification platform, basically how we're treating it in this series, we expect a couple hiccups with cheaper stuff, as I mentioned before. So this is fixable by someone who is going to be doing modification and tinkering. If you're going to be buying it to use basically as is or for a young person, I would say either step up to a uh, proper power supply and I will link a uh, cheap functional meanwhile supply underneath which has a slightly less current, but will work in stock configuration or upgrade to the Ender Pro, which you should also be able to find from the link in the video description. Also check out the video that I posted on that power supply. If you either want to know what's going on or if you want to check your power supply, I will do more uh, detailed information on that in the actual power supply video when I get into the series. But I will be attempting to get a hold of somebody in Creality and let them know about this. So hopefully they get that patched up in the next batch that comes out. Anyway, enough of that. Back to this video. So this is the in live stream in its entirety. But I took all the parts while I was just fumbling for nuts and bolts and screwing things together. And just super fast forwarded them. So instead of like three and a half hours long, it's like an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and a half long or something like that. Thank you to everybody who showed up for that. It seemed like 90% or so of the people who were in the chat already had these printers and they just wanted to watch me suffer through it. But it was extremely helpful to have their input the entire time because what I decided to do was just try to have the complete experience. And I went into it somewhat blind. I mean, you can't do anything in a 3D printing world and not know about the Ender 3s, but um, I tried to not get into like the nuts and the bolts of details so that I would go in with a fresh perspective and be able to follow the instructions as if somebody at home were just pulling it out and trying to follow the instructions. So I didn't use any fancy tools. I didn't have any prior knowledge of like, you know, how the assemblies were going to go together and things like that. And I followed the printed instructions. And if you watch this, there were some very good points made by the people in the chat one of which was the printed instructions suck and they did so i'm going to look through the um the pdfs that they have and uh incorporate that in part one of this which will be what we learned from the live stream and 
what you can do if you're now, purchasing some one of these printers asked, to make the assembly put go a little links bit quicker. Down in the, uh, and I'm actually going to be to tearing the printer the back official apart and on putting Amazon it back together in, uh, for whatever that, zones that because I, I want to, to I'm not do a put little bit more in-depth checking into there like are these the power supply and the control board and all that kind of stuff because I couldn't really tear things apart too much on the live stream because people were watching it already took three and a half hours I didn't want it to basically how we're treating it. And if you have any tips or or if you have any questions, cheaper stuff, um, as I mentioned leave them in the before. comments so down there. Is fixable because like I said, I'm still working out some of the methodology if here. And now that I've actually built it, I'm going to jump online onto the forums and see what everyone else suggests. Person, but I'd like to hear what I would say all of you have to suggest. Step because there were some a, uh, pretty good suggestions. Proper power supply, and I will link I a cheap functional meanwhile supply underneath. And now I feel dumb. The stream ran so long, I didn't really Which get has, uh, a slightly uh, less current, super but will test work print down, but let me move this camera right here. Over or on that side, I Pro, have the printer currently printing right now. Actually, you can probably hear it because those drivers are a little bit noisy. And I'm doing the, uh, is it a dog? The dog file for, that was on the SD card. So hopefully by the time I get this video edited, that'll be finished and I'll be able to tack some pretty pictures on at the end and I'll show it in the next video if I don't have time to do that. By the way, our little doggy friend here took like six freaking hours to print, so just bear that in mind. I naturally ran out of the uh, little tiny 100 gram spool of filament that they put in there, so in a panic I grabbed some clear stuff that I just had lying next to the desk. I kind of wish if I knew I was going to be committing that much time to it i'd grab the better looking filament but you can see that it actually turned out pretty good so i'm gonna have to figure out what these settings are and uh, get a baseline going on welcome to the stream live from philadelphia is the alex kennis show all right we finally got this stuff working what we're going to be doing here is um hopefully getting this stupid thing built uh, i've been wanting to do this for I've had this printer for weeks and weeks, maybe even months. Um, it was sent by a uh, Patreon supporter named Jorg, and um, so I didn't get this from Creality. But I wanted to do uh, one of the Creality printers for a while because um, they're working with Naomi Wu for a while, as all of you probably know, and they're trying to get on board with the open source thing. They're still learning what all that means, but I like to try to support these companies in doing that. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyway... I'm going to be taking notes as we go along. Instead of just taking it apart or uh, just open it up and put it together, I want to kind of look at some of the tidbits first. So um, hopefully we can get it together and get a test print. It depends how long it takes to do all that. Yeah, this packaging is pretty baller. It definitely reuses foam. There she blows. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, they covered up all the important bits. Nope, nope, there they are. 360 watt, 24 volts. They have all the zappy parts covered up, so that's pretty nice. And extruder. So when I get into this series, um, wait, my mic is pointed at the wrong thing. Uh, when I get into the series, I'm going to be going over like extruder stuff. So this will be pulled apart in the future and then put back together and all that stuff. And we'll, we'll try out some other different options. Uh, they've got a, what camera can you see in? Silicone sock on there, that's pretty nice. Single cooling fan, that's not great. I tried to stay fairly ignorant about the exact specs of these so that I could just kind of like open it up and see instead of being colored by, you know, my perceptions of everybody else. So forgive me if I'm going over some remedial things that you all already know. Wheels are tight but not binding. 
Looks like they have one eccentric nut on the bottom to adjust that. That's good. It should be on the bottom. Is the crappy fake power connector or is it upgraded to an actual power connector? You mean this one or the this one? That's an EIC. This one is... looks like that. Can a child finger not get through the hole in the PSU cover and are the wires fixed so that they can't be pulled? That's a good question. A child could get their finger through here, yes. They, there are, um, there's rubber insulation over all of the zappy bits. So you'd have to work pretty hard to get in there. But I would personally feel more comfortable with like, a smaller hole in a rubber grommet. These are screwed in, they're not pressed in, so you'd have to give it a good tug to do damage. It's a little bit of flex in that complete, but it's not just pulling out. I was kind of afraid of that because sometimes with these budget printers, these are really bad. Better than average motors? Yeah, well, we shall she. I heard they're pretty decent though. Uh, what was I going to grab? Oh, Allen wrenches. It's my amazing organizational method right here. I want to see how much adjustment there is on this, uh, the nut here, because I do know that a lot of people are having alignment issues with these. And it looks like you can align it. I'll have to see when we get to the instructions um, if they have a procedure for doing that, because that could eliminate a lot of problems that people are having online. Let me see what else. I'm for sure not using this thing. Scrapey doodle doo. Um, if I were selling this for something that um, kids might be buying, I'd definitely grind those corners down because these are pretty dangerous otherwise. Alright. Ooh, is this a little USB adapter? That's so nice. I'll have to check if that works. Eight gig no name SDHC. Um, when I get into the series, I'm going to test this for uh, read speed and that type of thing too, just in case people are having problems streaming off the cards. I bought like twelve uh, micro SD cards because I'm going to be doing like some, uh, you know, Raspberry Pi ish Octoprint stuff. And I want to test like random read write times on them because the old cards, I don't know if I have one around here. Well, these old Samsung Evo Pluses that I used for all that stuff, um, they don't make them anymore. So they've replaced that with instead of Evo Plus sign, Evo PLUS, and they're not the same for like small block read and write speeds. So I'm going to make a video out of that and give it to everybody because I need to find out for myself. But I'll, I'll test this card too. All right, other couplers and... Huh, does anyone know are these uh, upgrade couplers to replace these with or are these for something else? Because it looks like these are the nice ones with the little clippy-doos on them. There's an extra nozzle in there too. This was another cause of people having alignment problems and binding on the Z-axis. Um, this is like just tiny little bit of flexy that doesn't really flex so uh we'll have to inspect this in the in the coming days as well and see how that goes because if this isn't perfectly aligned and the threaded rod isn't perfectly straight i can see how people are getting binding also it doesn't look like there's um lateral adjustment on the mount that goes on to presumably this goes on the rail here and if that doesn't align with the coupling nut, then it'll be skewed and bind, so we shall see. 
Can't wait what, to see what you do with Octoprint and Clipper setups. Almost got mine dial in and I'm being picky. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, Bonafide Pirate says, I changed that coupler on mine. Yeah, I think the coupler is going to be like one of the first things to go in the mod series, but we'll, uh, we'll see if I can do anything, any like fast and dirty stuff with it for the people that can't, um, you know, for the youngins that can't just go buy in new pieces of gear all the time. That's not bad. From some of the pictures, I thought this was going to be like hand drill kind of janky, but that's actually machined pretty nicely. I was hoping to see that because the um, it's hard to get the dome type screws to sit flush against these V rails if you don't if you don't machine them out like that. Hopefully, you can see that. Ah, yes. I was kind of hoping they'd upgraded the processor on these. It's the uh, 1284P, which, um, if you know, that has uh, 128K of um, ProgMem, so you can't fit all the fancy giblets on there. And a CH340G serial to USB. They hot glued all the connectors down. That's interesting. Maybe they had problems with them popping off and shipping. These are rails directly from Open Builds because they're like right across the river there in Jersey. So I get these from them usually. Just looking at the difference in finish. Uh, the Creality guys, this is it's kind of a matte finish. These are, <coughs> excuse me, these are hard anodized, so maybe I should scratch an inconspicuous place and see how this is. Yeah, the anodization isn't as, is this even anodized or is that some kind of spray coating? So we'll have to see how these hold up with the rollers. Wash the corners on the V-slot ends when installing the Z-gantry on the vertical wheels. The POM wheels can get nicked. Thank you. That is true. My 32-bit test printer was the BQ Direct, blah, 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 BQ Direct SKR 1.3 32-bit. Will you be giving that a try next week? I was going to try to give that a try this week, but um, I ran into, as you can see with that last video, all the um, nonsense with the, uh, what are they called, 2209s with the disagreement and the data sheets and all that stuff. and ends up I had to look up a lot more things than I thought I would. They seem like they're going to be friggin' awesome when I get them in there though. Um, there's just a lot of stuff I want to make sure beforehand. Yeah, I was going to do, um, because I have, I have all these boards to do and I didn't want to do like the Ender specific boards until like after the series started. So the plan was last week do like the regular SKR and like the SKR Mini with the 2209s and then, you know, I can kind of do all of that at once. Um, and that would take care of the non-Ender specific boards, then I could do all like the E versions. So I've got like the Cheetah, I've got the, the Mini E3 Dip, I've got the regular Mini E3 and all that stuff. So um, I'll be doing all of those, but um, I might have to bang out the SKR and the SKR Mini first. Well, that's a little vague with those bolts. Those are definitely not the eight millimeters. I'm going to assume that's what I do with these other two. Yay, nay, maybe not. Okay, we have run into our first snag. We'll solve it in a second, but the PSU mount bolts 
Not specified. Step five. Oh, now on to the gantry. Ooh, this looks like fun. Still blowing in the wind, never quite get it right. Yeah, we'll see how that goes when I get this all together. Okay, gantry time. Trying to go by the instructions and not jump ahead and be like, ooh, this goes there. So this was the part, the reason I'm giving this um, particular attention was this is a part somebody emailed me about and I'll cover this in the review thing, but I wanted to make sure if what they were saying was true. It looks like the two... Um, eccentric nuts that adjust the tension for either side are both on the inside part so to get this properly tensioned with the the wheel sitting flush against the outside rails maybe you can see that better up here oh there's a delay um, you would have to loosen up the bolts that mount it to this guy or use shorter bolts and t-nuts so I'll have to see um, when I do the get deeper into it which one works better but for now we will just bolt it together as the instructions say <laughs> I forgot to put in the joke in the video I put out yesterday about plugging the USB thing upside down because I have the uh, I had the camera set up when I was doing all the little, you know, budget oscilloscope stuff. Then I went to plug the ST link and it was upside down. And I was like, ah! This just hangs out there? That's not my favorite thing in the world. Wait. So there's bolt through. Wow. Oh. Oh. Oh, not the most convenient thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, this bit is a pain. It's not the worst thing I've ever had to do, but that's super annoying. Okay, so, for those of you who are going back and watching this because you threw your wrench at the wall after trying to do this part, um, the, uh, the bits, well, which camera are we going to be able to look at? These bits right here that bolt this whole assembly on, you have to kind of fiddly put those in there, and then you stick the wrench down through that to screw it on. There isn't really mention of that in the instructions. It just kind of shows a picture of them magically going on there. So, yeah, that's a bit of a pain. Okay, and this, hopefully you can see this here, I noticed I put this in and um, this is getting real tight before it's flush, which is interesting. Backwards, ah, yeah, I was just, I'm looking at this in my lap and I'm looking up the thing and I was like, wait, did they not remount both sides? All right, so what Paul is saying here and what I did um, is see how they have this reamed out here? I thought that was so that a bolt could fit nice and flush in there earlier when I looked at it, but it's not. It's actually so that the direction's off. Yeah, I thought about looking at um, either downloading them, or I have them downloaded onto my desktop, or um, see if they're on the SD card. But I figured a lot of people are just going to be using these. See, this side is not reamed out by that side, so this bolt will not let you tighten it down properly. 
Yeah, there are recesses in a V slot right there. Okay, so that is note. Let me make note number two to mention when I do a video here. Why should I run the belt before I have an idler pulley? Because they said so. Alrighty, so now I have my belt flapping around just as you all wanted. DSL's back up. What did I miss? Um, I bolted a gantry backwards. Do you plan to do some testing on how wheel, well the wheels hold up, i.e. some G-code to move it back and forth and crazy? Yeah, actually I do plan on doing that. I'm not sure, um, I assume they followed the open build spec on these wheels and their, their Delrin or Palm, whatever you want to call it, but uh, some of them that I had were, or grabbed from China early on were like nylon, and they didn't hold up. I've seen the polycarbonate wheels, but they actually be better. I haven't actually tried the polycarbonate wheels. Um, like, Open Build has them. They cost, like, two or three times more. They're for, like, heavier-duty CNC stuff. I just kind of assumed they weren't necessary, but, uh... I could try them out if you guys really wanted. Alrighty. This step, we're putting this... I'm not a huge fan of this. I guess that's probably the easiest way to do it, but that seems like it will be unreliable. I guess we'll find out. And then... I'm trying to make sure I'm doing this on the camera, but there's like a 10 second delay or something, so I kind of like move something and... Ah, is it on camera? Can you see this? Whereas the preview right next to it is in real time, so... Time traveling here. I need another hand. Next, we are showing a random picture of the gantry, and then... Did they tell us to mount the Z-screw somewhere, and I just missed it? Or is that another... Time travel in our... Plot line of our instructions. This is the fun part. <laughs> Alright. Well, they seem to have skipped some steps here, and I assume this is going to go on. I was interested to see if they would have grease on here, and there there is grease, so that's good. I'm going to check this on the desk over there to see if it's flat. With the talk of binding from, you know, the kitties online, I thought these might be sketchy, but... But that's super... That's super straight, so... And now you are covered in black oil. Yeah, it will be soon. But yeah, they have a light... It's definitely a grease. It's like a lightweight, probably like lithium grease or something like that. There are some, if you can see this, machining flex. That's not great, but it doesn't look like there are a ton. Yeah, so the entire everything about the... This is missing here, so I guess I'll just YOLO it. If I were me, what I would do is drop this rod three times because it's slippery. Um, Mostly people don't know how to put the thing together. Yeah, yeah. so since it, since there's not any instructions here, I'm just going to thread this rod on halfway and then deposit it from the top. And we're a little bit tight, so...
and then slide this into there and hopefully we did it step 10 M25 by 25 with washers four pieces M25 by 25 with washers This has the trickery as well, so I nearly put this one upside down, but I'm hyper vigilant now. I was going to prep like um, Allen bits that fit everything and use a uh, electric drill, but I wanted to have the full experience of putting this together. Kind of wish I'd use the electric drill. Pink Moose says, I built mine on a piece of 18 millimeter thick flat glass so I can make sure everything was flat, square, and true. And also lots of use of an engineering square. That's a pretty good idea. Um, theoretically, this should pull itself fairly square because there's not a ton of play, but... There is enough that that could cause binding. Um, let me see if I have a square available. Full experience is throwing out the lead screw with the packaging material because it is in the vinyl tube. Yeah, <laughs> when I first opened it, I was looking around. I was like, oh my god, they forgot the lead screw. Is the cable supposed to be there? No, it is not. Did I do the cable wrong? Does this go differently? On mine, some of the beams were not cut square. Ooh, yeah, I didn't even think to check for that, actually. Uh, let me make a note. Don't put the top rail on yet. You will be removing the Z gantry multiple times to get it level. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't tighten this down, but I suspect you're right. I also don't know how this is supposed to be routed. So, it doesn't seem to... That's what I was looking for in the instructions just now. Well, it looks like that's everything other than plugging in all the motors and whatnot. So I guess the next step now that they don't have in here is just making sure everything is square and doesn't bind, tightening down the Z-axis. Is that correct, Amundo? Assembling a grown-up Lego. It does feel very Lego. The thing is, like, with instructions like this, you don't know... It doesn't matter how smart you are, because you're still sitting there like, Oh, what is that picture? Cable should be behind the lead screw. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll end up popping this off anyway. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is make sure this feeds up and down very well. The motor is not plugged in. Hopefully you can see that on the stream. Um, so we're not putting any back EMF into the board to blow out any drivers. Uh, wire goes through the gantry under the top beam. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to take this off to square it, so thank you very much. I'll put that back under there. Um, I just want to run this up to the top and down with my hands to make sure it's not binding up there. Down and tighten the bolts down on the bottom. I don't know if they have a procedure for this. There wasn't one in the papers. I'm just kind of using common sense here. Um, so I'm just going to sort of treat it like putting a wheel in a car and like tighten it up and cross in turns. So uh, making sure that these aren't binding, then run it up to the top. I'm going to tighten down this side in the motor and then run it down and tighten down this side in the top and then tighten the top down. But I have to take this off to put the wire through because there was no picture of that. So let me do that first. Man, your hands really get slippery from the uh, lead screw. Makes it very difficult using the included Allen wrenches. I'm like one slip away from saying screw it and grabbing a uh, electric wrench. 
Common what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ransom bot says I'll use a carpentry square. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thomas Salander uses a power drive. Yeah, I thought about doing that, but like I said, I wanted to get the whole stupid experience so that uh, if something happened, like, hey, my hands are all greasy from touching the lead screw. Why do people turn their car alarms on in the city? Alrighty, now back to this. So I'm going to run it down to the bottom, tighten up the left side, run it up, tighten up the other side, and then see how we go. If you can't see this on camera, I am tightening up the bottom left bolts. Now I'm going to tighten down the motor, or snug it down. Because cars get stolen in the city. <laughs> yeah, but the car alarms don't do anything. I mean, if you have them like, if you have them with like GPS trace and things like that, that's one thing. But um, a lot of people have the sensitivity way too high in the city and like just from somebody passing by with a motorcycle or a bus it starts going off so everybody that lives here you just kind of like learn to ignore everything um why do i live here because um it's easy proximity to just about everything and there's always something going on and i'm the kind of guy that likes getting up in the middle, like three in the morning and going and getting a falafel two blocks down and things like that so but you know we have all the the art stuff and the crafts and the um, maker spaces and you know hacker spaces and all that stuff so the trade-off is you don't have a lot of room to work with and you occasionally have annoying people outside your window but I do live in like a super busy part of the city so um, I also used to work as a um, audio engineer when I wasn't on the road and uh, I ran sound at like three of the clubs right on this street here. They have since shut down and I don't run sound there anymore, but I still live here, so. Okay, so I tightened down this side, tightened down the motor. Now I'm gonna run it up and down and um, then we're gonna tighten down this side when I'm convinced that that's okay-ish. Um, I'm trying to like devise on the fly a way to do this and make sure that it doesn't bind without um, tools that normal people wouldn't have and where this sits right here theoretically that's not binding anywhere along the axis so once I get it tightened down we'll double check that now I'm gonna run this halfway up hopefully you can see that I'm gonna run it halfway up and then tighten down this nut to try to get it aligned um, eh, aligned on axis with the coupler Normal people don't watch my stream. Good. Normal people with their equalized serotonin levels. I'm just checking to see if this is uh, getting weird at any point in time. And if it seems cool, I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this nut. Hopefully you can see that. Let me slide this over and it won't be binding. Would you rather buy an Ender than a Prusa? Um, I don't know. The, uh... I tend toward, like... I mean, all, basically all my printers that I actually use are DIY because I've gotten to the point where... You know, coming up through the RepRap era, that was just the mentality in my head. But I do have a couple commercial printers. I don't have a Prusa. Um, but they are very convenient and well supported and they have a wide uh, a wide audience just checking to make sure this isn't binding after I tighten it down so we'll see when we get into the mod series um, the thing I'm most interested in in the like this versus other things like I think at this price point as long as it's safe it's probably could pretty good for a beginner except for all these little quirky things with the instructions um, but it's also probably pretty decent for a mod platform the thing um, 
I'm concerned about is like how much it will cost when all is said and done and it gets tweaked in and like all the mods are I'll have to do a, you know do a proper BOM and see how much that goes into it because if we end up replacing the hot end and the fans and who knows where it's going to go we'll have to see this feels pretty good after doing that whole tightening this tightening that tightening the other thing action so now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, tighten the top bolts down um, first I'm going to back them all out to make sure that they're loose because I don't want to throw that skewed not safe don't have thermal runaway so they didn't um, they don't have thermal runaway protection out of the box because that was one of the things I was going to have to check Hello, Alex says, Robbie Hobby Rob, thank you for answering my questions in previous videos. Sure thing. I try my best. Sometimes I get like super behind on projects and super busy with other stuff and uh, can't catch up with online questions. So I'm always happy when I can actually do that and help somebody out because I, I do a lot of nonsense and I know how frustrating it is when you're first trying to learn something and nobody seems to uh, want to answer your questions when you um, that has experience in it so I really try to help out what I can not that I know everything but I'll open my mouth and talk until you die if I do know something and you need to know it I'm just checking to make sure that this doesn't bind up at any point as you can see I'm barely brushing this with my thumb so if this were bind binding up at any point in time it would definitely not keep turning and I'm not having a problem with it so that's cool um, now I have to tension these down here you've done the lead screw now wash your hands yeah just to one more thing with the lead screw I have to uh, do the tension on the outer wheels and then then I will clean my hands oh yeah that's right can't get to those so yeah um, there's a note there make sure leave these a little bit loose make this tight because you cannot screw through the stupid thing unless they conveniently put holes in it somewhere so if you didn't tighten down these bolts on the motor side, it may be easier just to drill holes through the rail than take the whole stupid thing apart, tighten them, and put it back together again. I may actually do that. These are tightened, but I may actually drill some holes in here so I could do that stuff I need to do with that side of the gantry without disassembling the whole stupid thing. Okay, next I'm going to check the eccentric wheels with, I assume... A wrench that they included that's somewhere in this nightmare. I'm going to start throwing these cellophane packages on the floor here because I can't see anything. Do all the rollers make contact with the frame? I am checking that right now. Um, first step I'm going to do is loosen, actually loosen all of these eccentric nuts. If I can find out which direction they're in. Nope, that is tightened. That is loosened. Um, these outer wheels do not make contact, so I'm going to tighten those up. First thing I want to do is just tighten the right side eccentric nut because um, this is the one that's going to be locked down, and then this side is going to be our adjustable side. So let's go ahead and lock this. Okay. So now who asked the uh, Ronald Ronald Widdeman? Okay. So now. Basically, at this point, we have a fancy cantilever with extra hardware over here. So this side is all tight. Um, I just ran this up and down, and that's not binding up. I wanted to make sure that after I tightened down the eccentric screw on the motor side that it didn't shift it over and put the uh, Z-axis rod out of skew, and that appears to be fine. As you can see, it's just sort of like by hand it's rolling up and down so we're cool now I'm going to loosen these two bolts that hold this whole plate on and pull this against the frame um, with the wheel and then tighten those back up hopefully um, that's what I was checking earlier when I first pulled it out um, hopefully we have enough play in the hole in those bolts that uh, we can get proper adjustment Oh, 
Again, none of this is in the instructions. This is just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and from what I've heard through the grapevine. So yeah. So as you can see right here, hopefully on the film, that's a little bit loose. Now I'm going to tighten this nut down. Um, can you see that on camera? Yeah, so all three of these wheels are making contact wheel now. All three of these wheels are making contact now. And I'm going to now tighten down this gantry plate. Check that the gantry extrusion is 90 degrees to the uprights when you tighten that end up also. Yeah, hopefully that's... Actually, you know what? Equipment that normal people would have is a piece of paper, so I will allow myself to use a piece of paper. Yeah, I'll have to flip that over and take a look. I haven't even looked at that yet. Uh, the bad part is you need to loosen the other end up too, the bolts you can't reach. Good call. I am going to make a note of that. So, what that whole last couple minutes of rigmarole was, a um, couple people were saying make sure the gantry is 90 degrees and parallel to the bed. Um, so I guess a couple ways you could do that. Uh, I just decided to use a sheet of paper and make sure that it was square because I figured everyone would have a sheet of paper. You could also just use a ruler or something like that, but the paper's probably easier. Um, and as it turns out, the whole thing is not square. So uh, what the uh, bona fide pirate says, uh, the problem there is that you have to loosen up these two bolts on the motor side in order to skew that this way and then retighten this side down so that it's parallel. So I will definitely make a note of that. I, I honestly don't know how you would get um, that whole thing parallel right off the bat, but now I see definitely not waiting as long as possible to bolt this top down is nice, but you have to bolt it down and see if it pulled the whole thing out of skew and then unbolt it anyway. So oh, yeah, this is kind of a this is kind of a pain. Um, but you don't know if the bed is leveled. That is not a good reference. That is true. Uh, I will measure from the um, the frame here to the gantry. Let me just make a note because I forget because my brain's like a squirrel here. Guess I should have told you I was getting up. I'm just walking away. I'm done. Carpentry Square is your friend and quick clamps. Yeah, they should include those in the box if they want you to use them. I'm going to try this with paper again. Yeah, that's like a couple degrees off. So, what do you all do think I should do for uh, recommendations in a video? Should I recommend getting a, um, like going out to a craft supply store and getting a square so you can tee this off before you have to deal with all that nonsense? Or should I recommend tweaking it by hand and measuring from the gantry down to the frame? Which do you think is easiest for uh, normies? It's fun when I ask a question and then there's like a 30 second pause and I'm like, uh, square, get the tool, measure down to the frame. Yeah, maybe I'll just, I'll recommend both things. <laughs> get a squ square ruler and burn that piece of paper. Yeah, I got a, I got a ruler right here. Um, if you have a square, use it. Measuring should get you fairly close, too. Yeah, I think I'll show both possible methods when I do the video for this. And, um, I think that you're right. The square is probably the easiest because you just kind of stick it under here. But, uh, obviously not everyone might have one. Um, the ruler is okay, but it's very awkward where this side, to measure, you have the engine in a way. And then the other side, you have the, the gantry and the LCD in the way. Oh, excuse me. Uh, use a square against a frame, top or bottom with the frame. Frame frame has to be square first. Yeah. It's 
small amount of wiggle by slackening the wheels on the extruder side and then pushing them against the frame with your thumb. Yes. Uh, most normies end up the leveling the bed to match the skew. Well, I guess that's one way to do it. You're never going to have a truly square print that way. Um, use an Allen key that comes with it to gantry the frame. I would use a square from above. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll um, show a couple different ways of do it. I think I'm also going to recommend... Uh, oh, man can't really drill a hole in the frame because you can't get to those bolts without drilling it through here. Yeah, if I were giving um, recommendations to a manufacturer with this, that's uh, that's a, the most awkward thing that I've run into so far is making sure that the whole thing is square. And if uh, any of you are following along at home and don't know what we're talking about, I will flip this machine on its side and I'm trying to figure out how best to explain to everyone how they can do this procedure at home without any fancy tools. But this gantry is sagging a little bit this way and it's not parallel with the bed. So to get that um, nice and flat, you would have to undo the bolts on this side and this side, square it up, tighten it up, and then run through that tightening thing again. But, I keep looking at the wrong camera, but if you could get to these two bolts on the gantry side, you wouldn't have to remove that. Um, and these are the right spacing apart to fit into these little V slots here, but it's shifted over. So this hole actually lines up with this big solid piece on the end. Hopefully you can see that. So if I were giving manufacturing recommendations, I would say drill these two holes a little bit further this way and then drill holes right through this so then you could get an allen wrench through loosen up this gantry square it up that way tighten it up and then just move the gantry down so for leveling the gantry out i used two spice containers from the food cupboard and rested on yeah that's not a bad idea either actually um you unfortunately don't have access right here to a nice flat piece of the frame because otherwise you could rest the gantry right like that. Uh, yeah, the other upright you can get to. Who has that fox? The other upright, the bolts are just on the outside right here, if you can see it. It's just these bolts are through. Um, so anyways... What I am going to do is, so I don't make you all have to sit through taking that off and doing the, the squaring process, I'll cover all that in a video, but for right now, I'm going to YOLO Superman this. Ender th the Pro is the exact same way. That's a shame. Yeah. I don't re recommend the YOLO Superman method at home, but um, all I did was just loosen up the one side and put it to the side, uh, put it down to level it, and now I'm going to tighten up the other side. That's not great because this side should be as tight as possible. But I'm just trying to save y'all time. because it seems like it might be an easy way for uh, people without calipers and squares and things like that to measure it up by just resting this on here. But uh, like Jean, Jean Wood and John Charles said, uh, this plate is in the way, if you can see that in the overhead. Can you see that? Um, that's covering the electronics so that you can't get it flush on either side. But if you take that off, you could put two things down here and then just loosen that up, bring it down against those, tighten it, bring it up, check that it's square and that it should be good. Tire tread measurement tool. Shh, it's not a tire tread measurement tool. It's a depth gauge. <laughs> they actually sell those like, they sell those like on Ally Express as like uh, depth gauges, which made me laugh. All right, well, YOLO Superman worked, but 
I will um, have to figure out an easy way to do that. I'll send you an email, no need to remove the box. Okay, yeah, definitely send me an email if you have a fancier way of doing that, because I was thinking just take this plate off and put two things on there. Should I put all this, uh, plug everything in and try to print a thing? Uh, because for the video, I'm going to be taking this back apart again. So I can, I can put it together temporarily if you just want to see a thing print or something. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely be stripping this back down and then I'm going to walk through so I can shoot a video of like a couple different squaring methods there. But for now, back to the instructions because I have to follow through completely and um, see if their electronics instructions are any good. Okay, so we are on... Can you see this in the overhead? No, you cannot. Step 12. Step 12 E. Oh no, that's the axis. E. Now, do they show you where to route that cable? No, they do not. All right, so these are all level, are leveled. Burr How good is the pizza that you're not supposed to eat? If you like boardwalk style pizza, it's, it's amazing. Um, if you don't, it's greasy. But we have like, within a three block radius, we have 18 pizza shops. So, sky's the limit. Uh, end stop connector is a nice dark place. Yeah, it is. So that's if you were... I don't remember if I was mumbling while I was doing this, but you have to kind of shove the end stop connector in this way. I was looking around to see if there was an easy way to get at it, but there's not. You just have to kind of like stuff it in and... Uh, I just poked it with the back of an Allen wrench to make sure it was in there. It's mounted. It's just got a lot of flex. I guess that's just the uh, fan shroud, so it should be all right. Boardwalk pizza. Uh, the, the boardwalk style, well, that's what we call it around here. But it's like um, they're 28-inch pizzas, and they're, they're like the thin style. Not like super wafer thin, but they're, um, it's got like a, like a sweet garlic sauce and uh, just shredded mozzarella. There's a little insert you can print from Thingiverse that covers up the sharp edges on the cutout wires that go through the bottom. We'll have to check that out. Uh, what am I doing? What is this last one? Oh, extruder. Hope those zip clips are not too tight on the Bowden tube. These guys, uh, they seem to not be over tightened. I can turn them around by hand, so. Now, do the instructions say anything about the LCD cable? EXP3. Good thing I have x-ray vision and I can see through the back of this. Okay, EXT3 is the one closest to the bed. Do the... Um, those of you who have built this, the adjustment wheels for the bed, do they have two of those in another package? Because I do not have any. Um, otherwise, I'm going to run back and check the box and see if they fell off. Yeah, should be pre-assembled. If they aren't, then you're missing them. Yeah, I'm definitely missing them. Okay, so... For those of you following at home, I only have two of these things. So, I have one of these on here and one of these on here. Uh, mine came without the counter wheel for the extruder. That's interesting.
this is very confusing to me because they went through all the pro bother of like putting the bed on. They have the adjustment springs in the bottom. I'll flip that over and show you. Oh, actually the back wheel's there so I'm only missing one. Um, so I'm just going to stick a bolt in it for now. And it's four millimeter because reasons. I'm just using one of the T-slot nuts on there for now. Uh, let me see what all you have to say. Vibration during transport can make them fall off. Yeah, I was looking in the box. It's possible that I just like yeeted the wheel when I threw the boxes back there. So I'll double check that and let you guys know in the follow-up video if it just didn't ship with one. Um, I don't know where else it could have ended up. This is not a wheel, this is for that. I am the best 22 with a super chat. What are you asking? Uh, what do you think about the XL kit that makes the Ender 3 500 millimeter print height? I plan to get dual Z motor. Um, that's a good question. So I have not seen the XL kit. Uh, I assume it just gives you more length along the linear axis here, so it gives you longer uprights and then a longer lead screw. Is that correct? Um, because if that's the case, I can talk from there. Keep the left rear assembly as tight as possible and never loosen it. The others get adjusted during leveling. Okay. Uh, I am the best. The Ender 3 will have XL kit, dual Z, and Y linear rail mod. The problem that I have with uh, moving bed style printers that have really long Z axes is that you get a lot of sway with like tall prints. Um, that's why a lot of people that print like large cylindrical things move to like deltas and that sort of thing or at least like a, uh, a stationary bed printer um, because they can either um, like wobble and you get more ringing on the top because you're because of the motion of that or it can move enough and deflect to where when you do a if you don't do like a z-hop on your travel moves it can knock the thing right off the plate but it really depends from printer to printer and how fast you're printing. So if you're printing pretty slow up there, you might be okay. Okay, ZX is 500 millimeters. Yeah, so that's the only thing that I would look out for. So what I would do is check with people who have done that mod and see if everything is rigid enough for it to not have the print head knocking the prints off. Or if you use something like Z-Hop, if it can avoid doing that. Or like the avoid um, printed parts setting on Cura or something to make it move around. Uh, yeah, that's my concern. May have to slow down to prints at that height if there is such an option. Is Core XY a better way? Anything with a stationary bed is probably a better choice. So like Delta Core XY or even like a Cartesian machine with a with a moving Z bed. Not that like the moving bed thing can't work, but it yeah, that's just a thing you have to additionally check out for. <coughs> All right, so. Uh, let me see. I am the best says it mostly prints PETG, which is around 20, 30 millimeters. That's fine. Yeah, you have to print PETG very slowly because it's not particularly viscous. It's only like half as viscous as PLA at the same temp. Um, actually, it's probably less than that because you would have to really cook PLA. So you have to print that pretty slow anyway. You could give it a try. I would definitely like um, ask people that have experience with that particular mod before going all in on it. Tor Martin Ulberg says, thanks for providing your insight and thoughts on everything 3D printing related. No problem, man. I do what I can. I'm. There's a lot of people in the community that know a lot more about specific things than, like, uh, most of us do. And, uh, you know, it's like I learned from these dudes, like, some, you know, weird esoteric stuff. And I really wish they would all do YouTube videos, too, because a lot of them are, like, dudes that have been around the RepRap thing, like, forever. And they're used to just posting on the forums and talking to the same, like, group of, you know, 20, 30 people the whole time. So I, I was thinking of doing, like, a real, like, quickie video series on, like, how anybody with any platform can just 
grab a cell phone and like make some of these instructional videos and don't mind the haters just put them up so um what i'm doing right now is i'm just going to test for continuity with the uh, the grounds to make sure that's not floating before i plug it in then i am going to check and make sure that the power supply is not shorted like ground to hot and ground to neutral um, then I'm going to plug it in, I'm going to ground the one side and make sure that I am not floating voltage on my frame, which would mean that the uh, center reference for the capacitor in a switch mode power supply on the supply side is floating. And there's no way I would know that without testing it or getting zapped. So, um, after grounding, disconnect the XT60 and check the 24 volt too. So, okay, I don't have any continuity from uh, ground to hot or neutral. But I also don't have continuity from the safety ground to the chassis, which sketches me out. Uh, let me see. Did anyone mention to keep an eye on that yellow connector on the power supply? Yeah, they did. So let me whip this around here. Apparently this is janky. This is the, the X... Well, I'm looking at the wrong camera again. This is the uh, XT60 connector they were talking about. So... Um, I have this running over to this supply right here that's um, filter and it has an isolated ground that's star ground to the safety ground. That's, I said too many grounds at one time. The ground is for pussies. <laughs> oh man, I took the most voltage I've ever taken was 680 volts. And I was not right for the entire day. It was not my fault. The Chinese PSU values are always high on the ground. Replaced it with a mean well. Yeah, I'm a little sketched out by this. But um, I'm going to power it on and give it a test. Actually, I'm going to yank this yellow supply and then power it on and give it a test. Makers Muse did a good video on how to check uh, more information on that PSU connector. Yeah. Yeah, I saw he had one video where he had uh, strung a whole bunch of like power supplies together and one of them had a bad uh, bad reference ground. That's That super sucks these days with the switching supplies because a lot of times they have to reference to, uh, reference to ground. Electrical safety. Whenever you're plugging something in that may or may not be live and you're not sure if it is or if the connector is bad, take one hand and keep it in your pocket or at your side or whatever. Don't touch something with both hands because if you do end up getting zapped, you want the electricity to go down to ground. You don't want it to go accidentally across your body if you're like high potential, low potential. I didn't pop a fuse, but my lights did flicker. Okay, 24 out of the connector, 24 reference to ground, so I'm not going to get fried. That's a good... Yeah, and test with the back of your hand. So, yeah, if you're... <laughs> In America, we, we have 120-ish, 110, 120 volts on the wall. It's a lot different than in uh, overseas where you have a lot, much higher voltage. But, yeah, over here you can kind of get away with, if you don't know you have a live AC wire, test with the back of your hand. You don't test this way because your muscles contract and then you'll get stuck on it and you'll test this way and then it'll pull you away from it rather than... Especially with ACC, or AC that pulses. PSU is decent enough inside. Yeah, I'm definitely going to pull this PSU apart and I have a mean well here that I'll, I'll compare it to. I have a couple. Um, and see how it goes. Alright, so I pulled the XT60 apart and I just tested the voltages, made sure that nothing was floating, made sure I was actually getting 24 out of it. Everything seemed to be cool, so I plugged the, the XT60 back in. Now I'm going to power it up with the display on there and everything, so I'll try to get this in camera if I can. Of course there's a delay, so I have to adjust that and then sit here and wait, so I'll read some questions. Um, there have been Creality power supplies with the ground screw loose that connects to the case. We'll definitely have to check that. I grabbed this bottle of alcohol so I'd have something nice and flammable sitting right here next to the printer if something goes wrong. 
Uh, that looks like an upgraded PSU. Let me make a note to check and see if they cycle through a couple different PSU generations because that could be important. Just gonna clean my grubby fingerprints off of this. Hear the fans! No smoke, yeah, no smoke is good. My wife said I have to mention this on the stream because she thought it was very amusing. Hopefully you can see this here. Up! Handle with care! Afraid of wet! Okay, let's see what uh, menu options they have. Uh, any of you know if they have a bed leveling procedure on here, or should I just do it myself? Doesn't look like they have a guided leveling procedure. <laughs> Don't make fun of us who are afraid of wet. Manual procedure. Level, level corners. Is there a level corners menu here? Pardon me as I scroll through all this. What motherboard did it come with? Uh, it's the 1.14. I think that's what it was when I opened it up. You may want to check if the firmware is up to date. Good call. I'm not going to flash any firmware here, but I will check that and maybe flash another one. Uh, Marlin 2 has the level corners menu. Okay, so I have to do it old-fashioned style. It's been a long time since I did it this way. Alright, well, let's auto home and see what happens. And N stop working, okay. Y N stop working, okay. Z N stop working, no. You know what? I never plugged in the Z N stop. Wow. All right, as it sits, the Z is a little low, so um. Fortunately, it leveled the bed all the way to the back so that the nozzle wouldn't crash into the bed and screw anything else up. So I'm going to have to pull the Z-axis up and loosen those two bolts and slide it up a little bit. You guys talking about the bootloader? Yeah, that's why I wanted to do a video. I knew that a lot of these didn't come flashed with a, uh, a boot, uh, well, a user space bootloader. So that's one thing I wanted to cover before I did this, but I didn't get a chance, so. So that is confirmed. There is no user space, like USB bootloader on here. You will have to flash it with a programmer. Uh, looks like the electronic closure fan could use a better cover to keep things from falling in. Yeah, there's no screen over that. It's just kind of holes. Um, what I'm doing there is that I got it level, but these springs don't have a whole lot of, like you can see, they don't have a whole lot of tension, so I want to crank them down as much as I can. So I lowered that a little bit more. This back corner dips a little bit. Uh, I'm checking with the paper in the corners. I already scraped it up a little bit because I went too fast. But I'm checking with the papers in the corners and then running it and just looking to see if it gets closer and further so I can tell where the dips are. See if one of you guys say, welcome to the Ender Cold Road Aluminum Beds. Uh -huh. um, I'm gonna check the dip this way by moving the, moving the Y axis, or the X-axis. Yeah, it's got a little, it's like, so it looks like it may be just that back right corner that's like smacked a little bit because it goes slightly up and then flat and then back toward the back it goes slightly up and then flat. That may be an artifact of that wheel missing and something happening in transit or maybe something happened in packing and that's what made the wheel fall off. I don't know, but it's definitely mashed on that one side. <laughs> a warped bed? That's never happened before. Yeah. Uh, ABL or a piece of glass from a hardware store? Yeah, I have stacks and stacks of glass. So I might, for the 
test print just print on it like it is and avoid that corner but tons and tons of old glass beds so could use that one or that one that's this was a really old one Th this is not safety glass this is just regular plate glass so that that kind of splattering you see all around it, that's just, I spray that down with glue and then kind of laminate two pieces together. So if it splits, it does like this, kind of like safety glass. So. Uh, my theory is they shear cut the beds. Yeah, it, it definitely looks like, if you look at the edges, it definitely looks. I'm trying to figure out what this weird fan behavior is. Uh, let me see. The two ender I have doesn't have any bent beds. Well, mine is slightly bent. I don't. That might. I might be able to correct it, but we'll see. Um, for the videos, I'll take it apart and make sure that it's flat and take pretty pictures. Okay, I'm gonna pop this in and see what they give us on the little card. I don't know if I'm gonna do any of the prints on here. I'll probably look and see if I can slice a quick print real fast. Why don't I preheat this while I'm doing that? So you said definitely they don't have the, um, uh, what do you call it, the safety enabled? Weird fan behavior is Marlin is testing the fan part. My hot end fan is not moving. That, I assumed that would have been an always on fan. The cooling fan is moving right now for no reason, but the hot end fan is not. So if that fan is bad, I won't be able to do a test print, probably without jamming up. I wonder if Vicky lapped flat. Uh, I could check. I'll have to see how far out it is. It looks pretty far out on the corner, like that corner got shoved down, but if I could shove that corner back up, I may be able to get it level. Thermal one away, yes. So that's not enabled. It appears something is jammed in my fan, and that's why it's not working. Alright, I'm going to shut this down real quick and see what's jamming the fan up. Uh, it's not spinning freely. It's definitely catching on something. Yeah, hear that? I think I have a goofy blade on it. Yeah, it's the missing adjuster wheel. It's exactly what it is. Caught up in the fan. That's not great. <laughs> if only you had another fan. If only I had another three bins of fans. Alright, that's good enough for me. Ender's oval fan, patent pending. It's the most efficient aerodynamic shape. Uh, strange, that broke my... Ender's cooling fan exploded shortly after I got it too. Odd being in the metal shroud, wonder if it's package or quality control. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's they just didn't test the fan and I got a goofy fan or uh, or what. But good thing I noticed that before I started printing, got a big old jam. All right, screw it. Okay, now go back to preheating, check what's on this SD card, and then. If there's nothing that looks quick, I'll slice something up and dump it on here real quick. Uh, is there a build date on the box? I will check that as soon as I hit print, or um, preheat. I'm gonna pull this camera down a little bit more, so sorry about the seasickness.
Okay, still there. Uh, almost all hot end fans are rattling after a while. My hot end started rattling after two weeks and replaced it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check all these because that was that was super goofy. Well, the preheat looks like it happened without burning anything up. Let's see if I can get this SD card in here without shoving it into the electronics. Um, I grabbed a piece of G-code that um, I just grabbed an STL and used a generic profile, so hopefully that's good. Should I use the stuff that they included just to get the whole experience? Are you going to run a PID auto tune on Bertorming? No, I want to print it like just for this. I just want to use all the stuff out of the box. That's why I didn't use like you know, power tools and like engineering squares and laser levels and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, in the uh, upcoming series, I'll do fancier stuff, but I think I'm just going to grab this PLA that they included with it and see how that works out. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't tune it, so stock former, no PID for you. Can't wait for the laser level assemble video. I do have a laser level somewhere. Ilya, you got caught in a spam filter. Hang on. Ah, where's my mouse cursor? Yes, Ilya, just to try. Um, sample filament is PLA and it prints well even at 185. Bed adhesion is good with some PLA, very hard to remove. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Cuts off fan blade, wonders why there's vibrations. Hmm. <laughs> Sticks it on a screwdriver, wonders why it's not level. Oh, that's an awful noise. What is that? Thinks that's the electronics fan that's making that noise? Okay, observations from first print. Um, this bed material seems all right for PLA. It's gripping even though it's a little bit, like I didn't level that, that back corner, like I said, is kind of down like this. And if I bring it up to where it has good adhesion in the middle, like it's gonna jam up in one spot or be low in the other so that back corner's not sticking very well. But it's still sticking all right. Um, the electronics fan makes a bunch of noise at lower speeds, which is strange. Get <laughs> back from groceries and the stream is still going. Yeah, I had to stop and... It's a bit stringy as it is. Let me see if I can... If they have the option to uh, turn the fan up. Nah, the fan's already maxed out, so... I'll turn the nozzle down a touch. They're metal. Oh, so that's just like a dark... Dark metal, like it's behind the bed, it's, and it's moving back and forth. I can't tell. Yeah, if they're if that is the style they put on like old, you know, dot matrix printers and things like that, where they had the machines like crush the pulleys onto the shaft as opposed to having a set screw that does not come off very easily at all um when i used to salvage those from like you know old printers and things like that i would just take um 
like take two little metal brackets and sit them like this around the pulley on a vise and then take like a punch and punch the uh, the shaft of the pulley out the bottom so that the pulley would just drop off. Now this is what was jamming up the fan apparently. I don't know what that's from. Oh, that's from this side fan. Okay, so that's another point that I will write down. Um, I didn't go through and check all the tight of the uh, tightness of the pre-installed screws. It looks like some of them are a little bit. If they come from a factory a little offset, then the belt may rub against the extrusion. Yeah, it actually looks like my belt is rubbing against the extrusion a little bit on this side. I don't know if I could cheat that over or if I'll have to adjust the motor. Alright, that's about halfway up. I'm going to tune this faster and see what happens. I'm pretty sure the acceleration on these is set to 500 from the factory, so I should be able to crank this and it's not going to matter. Uh, Iplop says, I had loose screws in a box when I got my Ender 5. Yeah, so I just made a note of that on a thing. That's what I was scribbling down just there. I did not check the tightness of all the pre-installed screws. And it looks like this just plopped out of the extruder when I was printing here. So that's probably what was jamming up the fan. Let me bring this camera down closer so you can see what's going on there. Uh, yes, acceleration 500, jerk on 10. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. I seem to remember that. Hi there, what's printing? It's just um, a cylinder with flattened sides for test prints. I'm going to put this up here and adjust it downward. That looks like hot end mount screw. It's the um, it's the mount for the uh, this thing, the blower fan. It's this upper left corner. It's like a M2 or something. It's not printing terribly, but this would definitely have to be tuned in. I'm going to turn back the flow a touch. Uh, great, my linear bearings for my bed are making a lot of noise after one year plus. Our PLA printed semi-decent temp fix. You mean, um... PLA printed like sleeve bearings. I've done that. If that's what you're talking about, I've done that way back in the day in the past. So um, yeah, I, the way that I would do it, and this was back when linear bearings were like super expensive and you had to do this kind of janky stuff, was to take the PLA stuff and print it so that it was just touching the four corners like that. Um, then I would take a piece of linear rod, like cut like that, and stick it in a drill bit, put some oil on it, and then turn it on and bzzz, kind of melt the PLA along the surface. Um, then pull it out, and that the surface there will be uh, like annealed a little bit, like crystallized, and then it's it's a bit slicker. So then just lube it up and put it on, and that's a decent temporary fix. But you know, it's it they do swell a little bit and so it might get tight and chatter and eventually it'll wear out a lot quicker than bearings but if you need something until your bearings come in the mail like sure uh, yesterday I was building another ender today I'm putting a hundred dollar Delta printer that comes from the factory with genuine MKS 1.0 why is it so hard for Creality to get rid of the 1284p I know right I did I literally didn't know any but ever since like the sanguine Alolo boards like were not popular anymore like I didn't think anyone was going to be using those because um, like a lot of times those old MCUs they don't really come down in price because demand just drops through the floor so they have they're sitting on piles on them I guess maybe they just snatched a whole bunch of them up real cheap and that's what they're using on the boards I have no idea because like SEM32 processes are so much cheaper than like the Atmel stuff the like the old 8-bit stuff they uh, but yeah it's tough to hold any kind of modern firmware with 128 k or 128K, 128K of storage.
1284p is way too small for all the features people now uh, features people now want. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, even just to fit the stock config right now, you have to strip it down to like minimalistic menus and like you know ditch a lot of the graphics and things like that. Which is I I haven't dug into the specific firmware for this, but I mean, how much storage space does the Ender graphic take up? Um, yeah, I mean, switching to a character display would free up some extra space, but I'll have to see if you can even fit. Can you fit unified bed leveling on 128K? Like, you'd probably be able to do, like, the the trilinear one. I doubt you'll be able to do mesh bed leveling because it has to store the mesh unless it can put it in EEPROM. All right, I'm going to stop this print in, like, a minute or so because it's only halfway done. I think it's just printing a big, long column. So that's about, you know, three inches of print, and then we'll... we'll take a look at it. It doesn't look great, but nothing's tweaked in, and then we'll call it a day. Um, so yeah, if you have any last questions you want to get in before the end, now's the time. This fan is driving me crazy, too. Otherwise, I'd let it print till the end and answer questions, but... And you can see how, whoop, no, my camera's over there. You can see how this, which was back toward where it's bent down, didn't adhere very well, but it was stuck pretty good on this side. So, um, what I did here, let me turn on this light so you can see, is I just sort of varied the speed as we went along. Hopefully that's quasi in focus. Um, so it's, it started out decently, That I think it was like 50 millimeters a second, then I cranked it up to like 200 or something, and then I slowed it down a whole lot for this last section. Obviously that last section looks best where it was slow, but as you can see through the middle here, like there was a lot of stringing. So that's that's going to have to be dialed out. I don't know what the retraction settings were for, for that, but there was a lot of spitting on this side too. It looks like it was... Um, over extruded and this might not be the best filament because usually when you get crappy filament it does that kind of like little warding and stuff so I'll do some test prints with decent filament just with the stock settings uh, I'll print the stuff that's on the SD card and see how that turns out I'm not going to make you sit here for like four hours while that happens though so I'll get that going tonight and put it up in a video as soon as I can get it up so is that a bad bearing on the fan N well, I had to snap one of the blades off of the fan because it was it was wambly. Apparently, I guess, this screw was knocking around inside of there and it screwed it up. Um, I think. I, I, that's just a theory. But this is definitely off-center and I am going to, as soon as this cools down, shut it off. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Can you even get M2 down to fit like that? I don't think I've ever seen it compile below 200K. Marlin 2, I, I think you can. I kind of wish they had kept Marlin 1 with just the 8-bit stuff and Marlin 2 with the 32-bit stuff so they didn't have to worry about, like, cutting out features and squashing things and, like... Um, I have not tried getting Marlin 2 down that small. Definitely gotten Marlin 1 down that small. Uh, yeah, no, actually, I'm lying. I have gotten Marlin 2 down that small, but not with a graphical LCD, because I have um, I have run Marlin on a blue pill board, not one of the 64K ones, one of the ones that actually has a 128K. Um, I did have that running with the character LCD, but that library is a lot smaller. It would not fit with the graphical LCD. I just had to take too many things. So, like, slim menus and take, uh, like, minimize a lot of the the uh, like buffering and caching and things like that. Um, so it will fit on 128K, so I could probably get it to fit on this, but it, it might be a stretch. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's pretty much what everybody else is saying. You need about six millimeters retract on the ender. It seems like you need a lot because that's that's a whole bunch of warding. That's, those are the uh, direction and layer changes, so that's definitely gonna have to be tweaked in. <coughs> Uh, feed that fan some lettuce. It sounds like a cricket. Yeah, seriously. 
Um, or Clipper and get all the features. Uh, I'm definitely in the course of this series going to mention alternative firmwares in here, so we will definitely be getting Clipper running on this thing. Uh, what else? Capricorn PTFE. Yes, I have some Capricorn. I don't know where it is. Um, I have a enough to do like four printers, so I'm definitely going to experiment with the Capricorn PTFE. I'm also going to have to experiment with these couplers to make sure that's cool, because I did buy in preparation some other couplers. Um, I also had some people uh, provide me with parts ahead of time for whenever I got the series done, so um, McEwen 3D sent over a bunch of like different hot ends and fans and things like that, and uh, Mod Mike sent over some things for the hot ends and the couplers and whatnot. So th those will all be testing. Um, I'll be testing the 32-bit board upgrades and all that. And what I'm going to try to do is um, journal the change from one thing to the other with each of the mods and use the same filament and everything the whole way through. So the filament I'm going to be using, as long as it prints okay, I bought a couple rolls of this cheapy Overture stuff so that I have something consistent through the whole thing. So at least I have three rolls worth of testing with this. And we'll see how that goes. So, uh, let me see what else. Replace couplers to end springs. Yeah, I noticed that when I was... Is that... Uh, yeah, the camera's still on. These springs are real. Like, I can compress those super easily. It looks like this will sway a whole lot. Yeah, I can see that, see that kind of skewing there. Um, alrighty, that's it for the stream. And uh, thank you all for coming out. Look out for the next video, and uh, I will have this on the DVR thing, so you can go back and watch it, and I will post this on YouTube in its entirety, and then I'll post an edited version. Uh, but you can ask any other questions after that if you get something afterwards, and like, oh, crap, I should have asked it. So, there you go. Oh, LA Linear Advance. I used Linear Advance on the 32-bit stuff. I haven't tried it. Is there a Linear Advance on the 8-bit stuff? I don't know if I've even thought to look for that but um yeah i did do it on a 32 bit did i do i didn't do a video on that i thought i did or maybe i meant to do it i never did yeah i can't remember but uh the tuning procedure on marlin's website is pretty good i think it's on marlin's website we have the the grid with the lines and all that stuff so anyway thank you all for coming and um that's all for now so get you later